Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our third identity. In this case, what we're doing is we're taking the divergence of a scalar function multiplied by a vector field. And they tell us that that is equal to the scalar function times the divergence of the vector field plus the vector field multiplied times the gradient of the scalar function and multiplied via the dot product. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first multiply the scalar function times the vector field and here's the result of that which means we're simply going to multiply the x squared y squared times each of the three components of the vector field to get this and then we're going to take the divergence of that product and that should equal to the sum of the scalar function multiplied times the divergence of the vector field plus the vector field multiplied times the gradient of the scalar function which is this right here so we'll work each of those out and show that they are the same so that shows then that the vector that the identity can be used sometimes to simplify something in terms like this so let's go ahead and take the divergence of this product first the divergence means we take the first we take the partial derivative with respect to x of this the partial derivative with respect to y of this and the partial derivative with respect to z of that quantity right there. So first here, the partial with respect to x of that will give us 4x cubed z plus 2xy squared z. Notice it no longer is a vector quantity. When we take the divergence, we end up with a scalar quantity. Now we take the derivative of this, the partial derivative with respect to y. So this gives us plus 2 x cubed y plus 4xy cubed and then plus the partial derivative with respect to z of this. Notice these two quantities do not have a z in them so they drop out. We have those two quantities so this becomes 2x squared plus 2y squared. So this is the result of the left side of that identity now that should be equal to the sum of these two so let's go ahead and calculate those so first we take the gradient of f which means we're going to end up with a vector quantity it's the partial derivative with respect to x of this in the i direction so this becomes 2x in the i direction plus the partial derivative of this with respect to y which is 2y in the j direction plus since there's no z's there 0 in the k direction now we're going to multiply via the dot product the vector field times the gradient of the scalar quantity. So we're going to multiply the x components together, we're going to multiply the y components together, and we're going to multiply the z components together. When we do that, we get the following. So we have 2x cubed z, multiply the y components together, plus 2y cubed x, and then plus zero. So here we have this portion of the right side calculated right here. So now we're going to calculate this here. So first we're going to take the divergence of the vector field. That means we're going to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. That gives us 2xz plus the partial derivative of this with respect to y. That's 2xy. Put the x first and then plus the partial derivative of this with respect to z, which is 2. Again, when you take the divergence, you end up with a scalar quantity. Now we have to multiply this, the scalar function, with the divergence of the vector field. So we multiply the x squared and the y squared with each of these terms. We get the following. First, using the x squared, we get 2x cubed z plus 2x cubed y plus 2x squared plus now we multiply the second portion the y squared so here we get 2xy squared z we multiply this times the y squared and we multiply this plus 2xy cubed and then plus 2y squared and so let's go ahead and circle this so now we have to take these two together and we add them together. So I'll just go ahead and show you that now we're simply going to add those terms together. 
So this is going to be equal to, we have a 2x cubed z, 2x cubed z, which is a 4x cubed z. A 2y cubed x, and we don't, oh, here we go. We have a 2y cubed x. So um, that's four of them, so plus 4y cubed x. Okay, what else do we have? So we have a 2 x cubed y. I'll skip that one for a moment. We have a plus 2xy squared z. And then we have a 2x squared and a 2y squared. And we have those combined already. Okay, very good. So now what we're going to show is that what we have over here and what we have over here should be the same thing. All right, let's use a different color and underline what we have here. We have a 4x cubed z and a 4x cubed z, so these are the same. We have a 2xy squared z and we have a 2xy squared z, so that's the same. We have a 2x cubed y and a 2x cubed y, so those are the same. We have a 4x cubed xy cubed and a 4xy cubed, so those are the same. We have a 2x squared and a 2y squared, a 2x squared and a 2y squared. So again, we've shown you through an example that that identity appears to work. And that's what we mean by identity number three.